Welcome to episode two of How They Filmed That, where we break down movies, TV shows, and commercials with the people who are actually there making it, telling the real, true, behind the scenes, the secrets of what happened on set and how they created these incredible filmmaking masterpieces. And it comes in and just throws just it. whips it. And at first I'm like, oh, that's, why are you doing that? But it's only two, three seconds total. All right? that work you did to figure that out, make it happen. Mm -hmm. In episode one, we broke down Joker with Larry Schur, and today we have the incredibly talented DP, camera operator, and gimbal master, Chris Hare, showing us how they pulled off some of the most impossible gimbal shots. Okay, welcome to episode two of Breaking Down Feature Films, Commercials, High End Productions with people that actually were on set shooting it. Um, and in this episode, we have Chris Hare, DP, camera operator. A lot of camera operating, a little more DPing nowadays. Heck um, yeah. Trying to move up in the world. Some of the things you've been on? Straight Outta Compton, Stars Born, Don't Worry Darling, Obi Wan, Star Wars thing, um, a lot of commercials. Worked on the Super Bowl. That was like a very offshoot, tangential thing, but you know. You also used to vlog. I used to vlog, yeah. There's actually a movie we shot in Europe. It was like a Chinese film with like some American stars. And somehow I was able to like film everything to an extent. Like I couldn't film certain actors. But That's where I first saw you. I yeah. used to watch the vlog. I think you vlogged before I even did YouTube. And I was like, oh, I love this. Like, please show me more. Like. I'd be like just watching every single video to see if I'd get any glimpse of like, like some how are technique you, yeah, what are you guys doing? doing? Yeah. And now, now because of this whole thing, we get, oh, we get yeah. Chris here. Sitting down in Canada. And Chris is gonna spill the beans and tell us what actually happened, uh, you know, behind the scenes, kind of like the, the secret stories mm -hmm. of how some of this stuff was made. Uh, so we're gonna break down a few different scenes, a few different really cool camera movements. Chris is, part of these like crazy, you were like kind of pioneering in a way, a lot of these like crazy Movi, gimbal, mm -hmm. move, one or movements. And and so uh, I think we're gonna break down some of those. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can guess how it's done <laughs> first. Yeah, there's one I have in mind in particular. That, uh, okay, let's, let's go straight into it. So the first thing we're gonna break down is a Robin Hood commercial you did. Yeah, so we did this uh, a couple years back now, but this was one of those calls I get where it's like, hey, we want to do a shot. We start on a techno crane, and then the techno crane, the camera comes off the crane into a moving city bus, and then the bus drives down the road, and the camera like goes through the bus and ends up like over the shoulder of a guy sitting at the bus. I'm just like, okay, yeah, I yeah, yeah. That out. <laughs> um, so I'll you play. like the challenges, eh? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's and I kind of found that niche for myself of like call Chris if you'd have to do this weird shot involving a lot of kind of camera trickery. Something um, that's never been done before. Yeah, so I'll just play that. Robin Hood believes now is the time to do money. Without the commission fees and the count minimums, so you can start investing today. This, these are the commercials where you're like, wait, how did you, what do you guys do? Are you guys handing it off in between every single bar? Or like, how are you getting the bull by the horns? And he just missed his stop. Yeah. Uh, it's time to do perfect. One. So what are you waiting for? How do you guys, how, what, what do you guys think? <laughs> how, did, how did you do that? So you clearly came from some sort of crane, techno yeah. crane, obviously. You're, Coming you're kind down. Of blue, and then you're handing it off. Through the window. Where's the handoff? Here? Somewhere. We try and bury it as best as we can. It's so it's, good. You know, it's no... kind of starting here. I'm kind of reaching out of the bus and then Bring here I in. have it fully. Now this is where it gets tricky. Like obviously we have to go around her head. Yeah, this is the spot where you're like, right. wait, how did you guys do that? But I can't like walk over the seat. So I'll show you the BTS of this, but essentially I have another helper there. Right? Yeah. So I have someone else taking part of it for this this bit, but then you have a pole right there. Yeah. So how am I continuing to like get around that? Oh, I want to see and the then BTS. here it's like, okay, well how do you get into this? <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's always like you're watching this, you're like, oh no, they're not gonna go that way. No, 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 how they yeah. do that? Yep, and I, they're going I don't that way. The, I'll show you the behind the scenes and you'll see what we did and it's maybe not exactly what you expect. So if you don't know, this is a techno crane, which is like, it's like a motorized crane. What, what would you, yeah, how would like you describe a, it to a, a person who doesn't know? It's like a jib, a camera crane. You know, you yeah. have weights on one end and the camera on the other, except it's uh, dynamic, right? So you can extend the camera out and then there's a weight carriage that moves back 
at a at the proper ratio to, to keep, keep it balanced. balanced. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. if you don't know what's going on, you see this thing just start to extend out and extend out. It looks like it's like defying physics, right? Yeah, like yeah That yeah. should just start tipping forward, but yeah. it doesn't because you have like two thousand pounds of steel on a motorized track going the other way. Perfectly balanced. Um, and yeah, there's a guy with with what's called a pickle. Which is like a, pickle. a lot of people, uh, hand control, pickle, whatever. Very like term. technical term. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that, that has a little rocker switch for in, for out and in. So there's that so control. So that's making you go forwards mm -hmm. and back essentially. And then you have the guy in the bucket that's swinging. So he's swinging, booming. Um, and in this case, we also had it on track. Right. So the whole crane is on a track, on track, which is. So the bus is driving, the crane is on track, so it can swing down. And it, you know, I'll just play this real quick so you can see. There it is. So it's moving on the track and with the bus. We're driving with the bus. I take it. Now they have to retract it and get it out of that window before the bus takes off. Uh, and you can see my little release mechanism I built getting in disengage up there. So it's this little clamp. And then, done. And that lets me then take it off. How, how do you guys rehearse that? Uh, very slowly, right? So you first do it static. You make sure that like when the uh, crane arms over, it's at the right distance, fully retracted. Right. And that you have enough room to retract so the bus can drive away. The but crane this, operators are getting their marks for like how far or whatever. Yeah, whatever. so they're setting marks. The dolly grips are setting. There's just marks everywhere. everywhere there's yeah. like six people involved in this. And but, then the driver goes a little bit too far or something like well, that. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you know, hopefully you have a good, you actually have precision drivers. So they have like professional stunt drivers that would do something like this. Uh, um, but it's funny, actually, on the day we found out we didn't have as many lanes as we thought. We were mm. supposed to have like three lanes of traffic, but we got relegated down to like the parking lane and one driving lane, which didn't actually allow us enough room to be able to get the crane in and then just retract out. Mm. So they had to retract and then they had to follow the bus until they could swing out uh, mm. so you know you had to be really precise or else you're banging this like half a million dollar crane and doing oh a half gosh. a million dollar bus and just destroying tell stuff. me that never happens you never break the stuff right it always works perfectly and <laughs> oh we break plenty of stuff that's why there's insurance uh, yeah okay how do you okay show so me how you get around part, the poles the next part how do you jump over that person yeah Okay. There's the track, we see it. Oh, yeah, hand off, it. perfect. There's a helping hand. Oh, you just... Just where, a where little... Where are the poles? Where are the poles? Oh, <laughs> there's no poles. <laughs> right? Got him! Oh, <laughs> so of course. The, the conversation there is like, you know, you're on the bus on the day, and it's like, we want to get the camera to go like through here and through here, and I'm like... Uh, and the shot has to be 15 seconds long. Right? Yeah, it's a 15 yeah. second spot. And you're like, I, I can't do that. And then you're kind of looking, you're like, can we just pull the poles and like put them back in and post? And the VFX guy is off in the corner, like, uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, right? yeah, so yeah. Like, um, <laughs> That's why you guys have the little markers everywhere, right? Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I think on the oh, poles, yeah. some of the other poles too, I think they had markers on them. Okay. Uh, or maybe not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, have, all over yeah, the place. Yeah, Tracking markers, marks. Yeah. See, I didn't even notice. Nah, I'm not good at this, you know. I've not <laughs> done this before, Chris. <laughs> so, you haven't yeah. had as much experience as me. <laughs> but, like, look at him. Like, he's, like, standing on the chair. I yeah. give him one hand. I keep my right hand on there and kind of... And she's pro, you know. She ducks down uh, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. take back control. But, you know, he's got to grab on somewhere else so I can scoop back in there. That's so good. And then the bus is moving, which is challenging, especially when you get up close to someone. And you still had to just and, try like, to remember here, he's, it. He's putting a hand on me. Because I'm very off balance there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is full core engagement. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're on a really wide lens, and then there's somebody dutching the head too. I wonder if we. Are you? Them. Is somebody else controlling yeah, the, so the this, head here? With the kind of handoff situation like this, you have a actually in the front of the bus, the wheels are set up. So there's somebody operating the roll, kind of mm -hmm. giving it this like floating feeling, right. and there's somebody on pan tilt. Oh, so and there's, there's two a focus different puller, people. And there's a focus puller, and then there's yep. somebody doing iris control. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Iris six. control because you're going from outside to in, mm -hmm. or? Yeah, so there's an iris pull. And the kicker, too, we did this shot like 30, 40 times. Because we did it during the day, and then we did it during like the best light, and then we did it at right. night. Because we were only doing two, no, this is the only shot we were doing this day. Because the whole commercial was this one shot. 
So for me, there's like added pressure too, where it's like, yeah, there's no cuts, there's, there's no nothing, no hiding, nothing. That's... This has to work, and it's all my stuff, like my heads, my release, <laughs> partially my concept, you know, along with the, the key grip and the. the so if it doesn't grip. work out, yeah, it's your fault. I my truck was loaded with all my equipment because I was like, <laughs> if there's anything I forget, I don't have to run back. And yeah, get, yeah, you can't run back and get it. There's no time. Yeah, yeah. so that was kind of a fun one. Um, that's insane. A good challenge. Didn't you say you own one of these techno cranes? Yeah, so we have a 25 foot. That was a 45 foot. That's a big one, but we yeah. have a 25 foot techno. But the fact that you you have your own techno. Is, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Pretty cool. You think I have a lot of gear? <laughs> this guy yeah. got the techno crane. <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah, when you come by next time, we'll have to play around. Yeah. And do a vlog. Can you bring it, it here next time? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, let me look at the mileage. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, but maybe. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. Just tow it across <laughs> the entire. I've always wanted way. to get a shot from the wind. <laughs> yeah. And then you guys did uh, another little spot for Robin Hood. Was mm -hmm. it, this was not the same day. So this is the next day. Again, we did like 35 takes of this in all different lighting conditions. And for me, we, we get it in the day. I'm like, okay, sweet, we're done. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, uh, we're going to wait for dusk, and then we're going to go again. I'm just like, my arms are like falling, yeah, yeah. falling off my body. One more time. Uh, so I'll just play this real quick. Robin Hood believes now is the time to do money without the commission fees and account minimums. So you can start investing and today. Everybody watches that. Like, oh, that's all VFX. Like, oh, like her. She's probably investing right now. Taking charge of her money, making it happen. She's not gonna be happy about that pillow. It's time to do money. So what are you waiting for? Download now and get That part must be, to me, like one of the hardest parts there is going from like big movements to then like subtle, like landing perfectly and like really slow movements mm -hmm. once you're close to her. Yeah, I mean, that again was a dual operated shot. Right. And, so it um, makes it a lot easier than, yeah, yeah. It yeah. makes it easier and it can make it harder depending. Mm. We had the luxury of like doing a lot of takes and it's partially my job to be like very consistent. So yeah, like, yeah, I come yeah. and I pause on the phone. Right. And then I don't just take off and start to go the other way. It's yeah, like this slow, slow, gradual thing and I can feel the camera panning and then I can kind of speed up. Interesting. Right. So we get into a flow. We also yeah, have yeah. calm. So like I can talk and be like, okay, and stop. Yeah, yeah. So that he's not relying on like the video delay. He can actually yeah, yeah, hear yeah. me say, and he'll yeah. just stop panning and trust that that's what, that's what it is. So. Yeah. All right, so how did you guys do this one? So this one. Techno crane? Techno crane from the street. And this was a challenge with the signal too, because you have it going from the street to the apartment. They wanted to be upstairs. So I had to mm. get a wireless signal that would reach the camera head, right? Yeah. Um, so that was a challenge, but Robin starts low. Booming up again, this guy, throw the basketball at like the right time to kind of give you, give your eye something to, yeah, to follow. Yeah, 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 go up. The feathers are added in post. Yeah. As And then there's the artificial focus rack that's like, you know, something to like, yeah, I guess yeah, they yeah. thought this part was like, there's not much going on. Yeah, yeah. And then this is all real. Like there's no There's no cut, cut there. there. We're going up. So now I'm basically sticking my body out of the window. Grabbing Grabbing it. the Ronin off the crane. The release is being done from the bottom of the crane, so we ran this little cable down to the <laughs> pole, right? And they're operating from 45 feet away, getting this camera in a window of like yeah. this much, right? So these <laughs> Just guys are so swinging good. that thing around. And there were times where the camera came up and like clipped the le the lip of the ledge and like bashed the map box and like this isn't like totally fine. perfect science. All yeah, the time. yeah. Um, so I grab it. I'm like in a really weird compromised position because we couldn't pull the actual window out of the right. frame. Yeah, it's just yeah. an old building. And, yeah, it's in the you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm out there grabbing it, and then they built this ramp so that I could grab it, reach it up above the lamps to the ceiling. The ramp, they, like you're walking up a ramp. Yeah, they have so this like steel pipe, and then they have like a steel deck, so it's like a show floor. Yeah, like, this steel with a yeah, yeah, wooden yeah. top. Yeah. Uh, so we're walking up. You're walking up the ramp. Up high. Then there's a small ramp down, which I kind of make seem shallower by keeping it higher for longer. Right. And there's a trained dog that they have to cue at the right time. <laughs> I didn't even think about the dog. Uh, there's a fan on a switch that they use to push. I don't know if that made it in. There's like a pencil that rolls across the ground. Mm. Um, so I dip it really low, and that's again all lower yeah, back, yeah, like just yeah, screaming. Yeah. Lift it back up, and then have to kind of feather into this into this stopping point. Yeah, and we're on a really wide lens. It's like a sixteen on a mini LF, so it's it's wide, yeah, pretty wide. That was also thirty something takes, and it, it was funny too. The last take, 
I was done. I was basically like, I can't do this anymore. No my more. My body was just <laughs> on fire. And then as soon as I'm about to be like, guys, I, I like I can't do this anymore. They're like, all right, we got it. We got all it. Right, that's that's a wrap. <laughs> it's just like, oh. You guys sure? I could have done a couple more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> no, but that wears on you when you're in these like weird positions that, you know, it's part of, partially your job to like communicate like, hey, like, yeah. you know, I only have so much more. Or, like we need to like swap swap people out or something. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think people understand the physicality that goes into some of these shots. It's yeah. not like it's hard to even just like having a heavy camera on your shoulder for a long time and trying to hold it steady. It's that's hard. Mm -hmm. Like physically. Definitely. It takes a lot. I can only imagine you trying to reach over the right. <laughs> like you pick stuff up close to your body for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, let's break down a movie that you worked on. Okay, uh, should we do Birds of Prey? Birds of okay. Prey, let's do Birds of Prey. Show us some, show us some, tell us some cool stories about yeah. some of these shots. Let's see. I mean, you always got the cool rig you get to do, you know, like the shopping cart rigs. Mm. You're, that's just, always, you're mounting it to the shopping cart. Yeah. And, then. and that's, you know, a lot of the grips, it's like, we'll line it up on our Artemis app. Right, like okay, this is cool. Making sure that it's possible, like you're not. Artemis app is an app on your phone that you yeah. choose, like the sensor size and mm -hmm. lenses and. Exactly, and then you can kind of use that to rough in shots instead of like. Yeah, try that thing yeah. around, be like, yeah, I think does like, this look good? Right <laughs> here, right? Or even you're doing it before the camera team shows up, right? Mm. Everyone's kind of building their carts outside. You can go in and line stuff up, and then the yeah, grips yeah. can get in motion of like, here's what we need to do. Yeah, here's yeah. Like, where the camera's supposed to go. But you know, so this is like the grips are grabbing all this rigging and stuff and then we'll grab like the third camera body and strip it down and like have it ready to be uh, rigged into here. And this is, is this called for? Like that's already like planned out? Like we need a shopping cart like moving thing or is that kind of like what like, is this like kind of like a specialty extra thing? Like, oh, that would be cool to do and then you guys do mm, it? No, this, I think this was probably storyboarded. Yeah. Right, because they know they're going to be pushing a shopping cart around the store. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. how do you cover that? Yeah, right? yeah, what kind of Do you do steady do cam for the whole time mm -hmm. or do you just throw the camera in the cart? Yeah. And it's a combination. We'll do a pass like this and then we'll have a camera at the end of the aisle yeah, yeah, that yeah. can kind of cross cut with this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Are you allowed to talk about what it's like working with Margot Robbie? Yeah, Margot was great. Um, she was, I'd say, in like my top three of like favorite actors to work with. She's just so nice, so kind. Let's list the worst one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you you already know who that is. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah, you have a very broad range of like personalities in Hollywood. Yeah, Mar I can like, like Margot Robbie being like the really best. Great with her. Some other people not so great. But Birds of Prey, everybody was awesome. Ewan McGregor also, he's yeah. a pro, very nice guy. Uh, Ali Wong. She was really good. And have you seen Beef yeah, yet? Yeah. She's so good. She's in so it. funny. Yeah. This was cool. This was actually we shot this on a stage in Warner Brothers. It's oh, meant to be like a foggy pier, you know. So yeah. like, obviously, like the lights in the background there, mm -hmm. like that's little post work that's yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. But then they just pumped the stage full of fog. Like, just a ton I mean, of fog. So thick of smoke, and yeah. then they have like, you know, they're rigging huge soft sources just to kind of bleed all that out. Yeah. There's a sandwich scene. Um, that was a tricky shot. I don't know if it's boarded in here, but basically she's like Just running, running out of this. Movie, yeah, yeah, she's like running out 120 frames, mm -hmm. doing a stunt with an actor, and then focus pulling. Like you're getting focus marks where like she lays down. It's like okay, Margaret, like we need your eyes to land here. Your eyes to land here. Right. <laughs> and then the sandwich hopefully lands like somewhere here. Hopefully rolls so that I can back. pull back and reveal it. You know. And it's like working with the focus puller too. Like we'll line it up. He'll get a mark. Okay, that's the face on the land. And then there's maybe the sandwich. And it's kind of roughed in general. And then you just go for it. Um, how do you feel the pressure in moments like that? Like, what does that feel like? To like There's definitely like a lot of the this like shopping mart and like trips and falls and like loses the sandwich, right? And we had the shot really low angle of her falling, landing, the sandwich rolling, and then her like screaming, you know, that yeah. she, that she dropped her like delicious egg sandwich. And that's just challenging because your mode of thinking, like when they call rolling. You know, you kind of tunnel vision in, and I, it's there's almost like a rhythm that, ha like a drumming rhythm. It's like you yeah, want to yeah. feel like it's. I don't know if it happens in your breathing, but yeah, definitely yeah. your breathing changes mm -hmm. and you're thinking, not trying to overthink it, but you want to yeah, feel yeah. like there's a subconscious like yeah, drum yeah. beat that everyone yeah, has yeah. to be on, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and the dolly grip too, who's pulling me back on the camera, right? All I'm doing is tilting. Yeah. Right. So all the hardware kind of comes beforehand of mm. like setting it up, talking to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Figuring happen. it all out. And then on the day, you just trust everybody to do their job. And my job is just a really fast tilt down and hopefully not chopping headroom. And then when you play it back at 120 frames per second, it's like a little error during the fall. Yeah. Lasts like three times. Yeah, longer. exactly. Or like focus buzz at 120 frames. It's like oop, really quick. It's like yeah, that's for three a or four seconds. Out of focus. Yeah. <laughs> but we got it and we we nailed it and it's in the movie. That's always fun to see too on the big screen. And yeah, 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 yeah. We did a crazy fight scene on this spinning carousel. Uh, so that thing actually rotates and then there's these hands and. You know, she's like bouncing off the hands and I'm on there on the carousel as it's spinning and like you're in the center and it's kind of calm. But then yeah. as you go to the edge, and, yeah, you, you like, want to get thrown off. Yeah, right? yeah. So that was that was challenging and that was That's a lot of core like rehearsing the fight scene over and yeah. over again to figure out then. So I'd start with my phone with Artemis, mm -hmm. right? Just so I didn't have to have the whole rig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can see like what the stunt beats are, mm -hmm. right? Like where the stunt guy comes around to do what attack. And yeah. it's like three people fighting off eight other people. Right. Right. So we're we're on Margo here and then we whip over to, you know, some of the other characters. And, yeah. And then we try it once with the Ronin. And for that I had to pull all the stuff off the Ronin and put it in a backpack. So I just had the camera and like the bare minimum because we had to whip so fast. Mm. Man, it's like it's a, in a in a way it's like really nice hearing these stories that there's no like no, uh, nothing seems impossible, but then you realize how much work goes into every mm -hmm. frame. Like it could be s just a few seconds of a movie and like so much work and coordination <laughs> and yeah. to just making that one thing happen. Yeah, I mean, this was, I think, a 65 day schedule, which is kind of on the short end mm. for a movie this size, you know? Obi-Wan yeah. was 110 days, Dang. but that's six episodes, you know? So you're, you are shooting more yeah. for that. Oh, shooting with mirrors. That's always tricky. Oh, that's so hard, yeah. Right? So each of these mirror segments can like pivot and it's lining everything up so that you don't see the camera and you see all the people you need to see. And then like we do our camera move, checking all the different points. Yeah. And sometimes you'll see the camera and there's just no way around it. And mm. they'll just know to paint it out. So yeah, yeah. we also have that luxury where you have like a full VFX staff where it's like, is Can it, we do that? Yeah. And they're like, yay, nay. Or like that light, we see it in frame. What costs less? Like spending mm. the time now to like lower mm. that condor, drive it over here, and then bring it back up, or just right. paint it out. If it's on black sky, whatever. They yeah, yeah, yeah. it's easy to paint out. Then. Which they don't like, where I'm just, I'll look over to the VFX supervisor, like, can you just paint that out? He's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Even though like they have so many, sh like they, they bid a job, like, you know, we'll do 800 VFX shots or something. And then by yeah. the end of it, there's 1200 and they yeah. can't raise their price yeah right yeah. it's that fixed price yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's uh I, I don't envy them for that but something i learned early on is kind of disheartening when you work so hard on a long shot and you're in the theater like okay, yeah no, the shot. You're and there's like a little piece of it and they cut to the wide yeah they're like oh my god but we did such cool stuff on that move and then they come back to your shot for two punches see. and they cut back to the wide and you're just like oh Okay. Spent so much time coordinating that one and it didn't even get, yeah. yeah. So the best ones are when the DPs and the director are together, like, okay, this is the one or we're not going to shoot coverage. Right. And you know, like, this whole this thing's is going to make it in the movie. There's no other way to do it other than, yeah. like, maybe speed ramp, which they did actually do on this yeah. a little bit. So this is, this was like almost like a little second unit situation where they're shooting, they're setting up for something and they're like, they've built this little, like, duvetine room out of, you know, 12 by duvetine rags. A little mini set for you. Yeah, just to kind of keep our light off of where else everyone else yeah. is working. Um, and so this was actually my dolly grip, Willie. And the dolly grip is like the guy pushing the dolly, doing the booming, laying the track. Yeah. Um, if you're doing handheld, they're like behind you, making sure you don't hit stuff. They're like kind of like yeah. the camera operator and the dolly grip work, work very closely. Mm -hmm. um, and Willie's actually been in like 20 movies. <laughs> it's kind of like the inside joke in our crew is he's always gets cast as stuff, right? Like he was in the new Twin Peaks. He's like, he sweeps the floor for like three minutes at the end of one of the episodes, like David Lynch directed thing. <laughs> and um, so he's like the sweeper in Twin Peaks. And there's like a whole like character page on him and stuff. Um, That's awesome. I think I'm pretty sure on his IMDb he has them all listed, but yeah. he's always in costume. You know they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he put the gloves on for Black Mask, and you know we had this periscope lens and everything, and he's holding the her Harley Quinn's business card. Um, so we had this shot, and then we had a shot where, again, this is a DP coming up to you and be like, uh, we want a whip pan from each line of the card, 
right? Because she's going to be reading out. She's going to be like listing what she's. So macro whip pants. Macro whip pants. Yeah, yeah. that's that's like part of the job description is like, <laughs> under my ability is like macro whip macro pants, whip. <laughs> which basically looked like, right? You have this camera, huge lens, tiny card, and you're whipping like a centimeter at a time, <laughs> right? So it's like operating like a microscope, and it was just like. <laughs> Great pants. Right. <laughs> it's, 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 it was a challenge, but we got it. and Took a little while, I bet. Yeah. Man, I wish you had a, a shot of that. I want to see your little micro pants. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys did a pretty big one -er shot here, and it actually got used the whole one. -er it got year. used. It did get speed ramped a little, because I think at the end of the day, they realized some of these shots, they just last too long. Yeah. Um, you know, which I, I'm just happy they use the whole thing. Yeah, they yeah, can speed ramp whatever. Again, yeah. that's out of our control. Like once we finish shooting, mm -hmm. we go home. Yeah. We don't have anything to do with the post. The DPs do like they'll do color and they'll like get sent cuts. And yeah, because yeah. sometimes they'll see something and be like, oh, we have a better take of that. Like, mm. you know, it just gets lost in all the notes. Yeah, but yeah, maybe yeah. someone remembers. Yeah, so I'll just play this quick. This girl gave me immunity. I could do whatever I wanted to whoever I wanted. And no one ever dared to object. First of all, right. give me the con. How long does this kind of this kind of shot take to like make happen? Like, all the rehearsal, everything, like figuring everything out. Is this like a whole day affair or? No, I think on the longer end we'll get like a half a day, six hours. Mm -hmm. This one. I think we probably did this and then like one easy, one or two other easy things. Mm. Um, but we definitely had plenty of time and we definitely yeah. had enough takes. And the whole environment too, like the collaboration between like Margo and the director and yeah. the DP and the operators and the grips. Are like if we get it and if we nail a shot, everyone's like so excited. Yeah, 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 hugs, yeah, you know? we did it, yeah. It is cool. Yeah. Um, so we're starting behind this bar, right? Mm -hmm. Which you know, so how do you, like, we want to push over the bar, yeah, right? Yeah. So, kind of, we build in this pan mm -hmm. so that someone can come from the right mm. and, and grab, grab one side of it. And then I think, I think someone was crouched, like, right on the other side of the bar <laughs> and it pops up, right? So you're looking up like this, waiting for waiting the camera to come up, and then you just reach grab your it. hand. So now it's being held, I think, by two people going down here. Waiting, so Margo's now resetting, sitting down, so that when we get to her, she's already in her action of like trying all these pills. Yeah, so she actually has to go from spot to spot mm -hmm. around this whole dance of the camera moving. So like she has to know when she's out of frame, which sometimes it's me like giving her a cue, or she just knows because they yeah, have yeah. that sense like we're on this lens, yeah, here's yeah, what yeah. it sees. So now we do another handoff here because we're going over the booth. Mm -hmm. So this is someone with it giving one side off to someone on the other side of this little aisle. Now one person has it here. She's getting reset at this head, talking to the head. Now what you got to notice here, this guy, this is actually the same guy holding the card, the business card, right? That's <laughs> Willie. So Willie's been in all these movies. There he is. He's like, you know, he's clapping, he's dancing. He is, he is, and then right here, he's going to take a hand and grab one side of the camera, right? So he has one side. So he's an extra, but then all of a sudden he's... <laughs> exactly. And then he has one side, and then I come back in from the right to grab the other side, right? So then, and I take the whole thing. So now I have it, and I kind of come in here. Again, she's reset. She's also put fake puke in her mouth of course. as she's running around. Pukes it into the purse. So gross. <laughs> you know, have these people come. And that's also something timing has to be worked out. That's where this, yeah. uh, what's it called, cha-cha line? Yeah, Congo line. Congo line. Right, uh... Then to the dancer, who's like all dressed up in like a zebra costume. Of course. And then back to Margot. And then they actually called cut, and she did this after they called cut, where she like licks the lens. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just like a joke, and it like totally made the. Yeah, of course, there is. Yeah. <laughs> I love those stories too, where it's like that wasn't planned. Yeah. Like, and then it makes the the movie or the cut. Yeah. Oh man, man, I, would, I I gotta someday you gotta bring me on set. I'll be your whatever whatever assistant to the assistant <laughs> to the assistant. <laughs> I just wanna come watch for yeah. a little bit. That's so sick. 
uh, does seeing that like you're watching in the movie theater, what do you what's the feeling? Is that like all the do you see just all the memories of like shooting it, uh, or do you see the final image like we see it? No, it's like the temperature of the room was it? Yeah. How loud? I was having how a bad day. Was, yeah. Like, um, whatever, whatever else happened that day, you just get triggered, or like how humid and sweaty it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I used to get really nervous, like when I went to see Straight Outta Compton the first time in theaters, I was so nervous. Because yeah. I had, would have like nightmares that like the gimbal was vibrating or something, and like mm. on the little monitors you can't see it, but then once then you, you blow it up big, eyes, like yeah. the whole image is vibrating. Yeah, a little like, movement on a, uh, a display or screen this size is totally different than a little movement on a... Yeah, so that's, that's kind of the reason why things are so much better bigger and heavier and over-engineered is because I really got to like stabilize these cameras. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, just going into see it in theaters first time was so nerve wracking. Yeah, I bet. Like with a bunch of friends and family and then also not knowing if they're going to credit me. Like, so we're all there ready for my credit roll and like they oh, just- Oh, you don't know no, but they can... no, You don't, but every movie I've worked on, they've always credited me. But you just have a fear that you're not going to get credit? Because it does happen. Like sometimes someone will come in for half the movie, mm. still do a bunch of work, but it's just like, they just don't make the credits. And it's, it's always, that you sucks. write down like your name and then your credit name. Mm. There, there's like a form you get. It's like, yeah. what, what would you like to be credited as? So you can add in your like nickname, mm. right? So like um, there's an operator worker named John Moyer. We, everybody calls him Buzz. So it's John Buzz Moyer. So if you see credits, like that's the that's name. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, Okay, yeah, let's, let's break down one more shot. I saw this on your Instagram. Yeah. This is super interesting, I think. This one's kind of on the, the more experimental end. More experimental? I would say this is a heavy <laughs> experimental. <laughs> so we had a the Ronin, and this was like, you know, this is like a text I get like, hey, can we hang the Ronin off of a cable and like have a way for like the dancers to like throw it back and forth? You know, it's like, okay, uh, how do we do that? Do you just use the Ronin in three axis mode? Yeah. But then you have to operate everything and that mm. doesn't really work. Wait, so that's a nightmare. Yeah. We're testing here. We locked off the pan axis. Mm. So it turns it into a two axis head that's stabilizing roll and tilt. Yeah. So if you spin it, it just spins. It spins, yeah, like a normal. Uh, but it stabilizes roll and then you still have tilt control. Mm. So I'm off to the side here with the tilt and then they're kind of just whipping it around yeah, and see yeah. what happens. So it's just kind of flopping around and so this is you guys testing rehearsing mm -hmm. so the, the dancers are rehearsing the dance number and then we just kind of went over to the stage to try this thing out and there's maddie just whipping it and it's funny like we're all kind of being gentle maddie comes in and just throws just whips it whips it and at first i'm like oh that's why are you doing that like we're never going to use that right we would never do that and then sure enough sure, that's, what you that's what we end up doing because that's why he's the DP and yeah. we're not, you know, because he like he has pushes it, yeah. it kind of and <laughs> yeah, you know, isn't afraid to experiment. So that's kind of what it looked like um, during the testing. And then on the day, this is kind of the setup. This is on a stage at Warner Brothers with uh, these, you know, really. I mean, I think it was probably forty feet tall of black fabric. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's like way overexposed in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Crisp. It looks totally different. You have all the dancers who've rehearsed this for weeks already, and that's what you saw in the background. Of the this video. handle system, is that something that you had to make specifically for this, or is that something you guys use normally, or it's just like... That's the ring that would come with a Ronin 2, and then we just padded Pat it because we're like tossing it around and we yeah. just don't want to injure anybody. But this was rigged with... Yeah. That's the Mini LF, and then what is on there? Tokina 18, which mm -hmm. was a full frame one of full frame Tokinos, because yeah. back then it was like there weren't as many full yeah, frame, full -frame ones, yeah. And we definitely pulled some stuff off that we didn't feel like we needed, like the Light Ranger, which would usually go there. Yeah. It's such a wide lens. It's yeah, yeah. Big deal. Um, so there's the rig on the day. And then each of those go up to the perms, those lines, mm -hmm. and then they can be pulled on from down below. So you can kind mm -hmm. of level it and, and bring it up and down. Right. And then the lock axe thing, you can see right there, the axis lock. Mm -hmm. So that's clamped into the battery to, to keep any play out. Because there is like a little motor lock, but that has like a little jiggle that you don't yeah. want. The spinny shot. Which looks wild. Yeah. But it's only it's like two, three seconds uh, total. All right? that work you did to figure that out, make it mm -hmm. happen, test it out, set it all up. 
two That's seconds. It. Yeah, but it's effective. You know, it's like Very effective. it's kind of a nightmare dream sequence and. You got some crazy trippy visual. Yeah, it. I mean that's never something that I've has that ever been done. I've never seen something yeah. like that. You know, like yeah. that's so crazy looking. That, but but like, the sequence is longer, right? Like there's crane shots coming from above, and the whole idea was to make the dancers look like the iris of an eye, mm. right? So there's like there's a lot of other shots we do, and yeah, you're kind of lucky if something makes it the final cut because most I'd say ninety percent of what we shoot ends up on the cutting room floor. How often like like that? Does it turn into something else because like it's not possible, or do you just figure out a way to, to get it done? Like like they're like oh, this is what we want to try, and then you're like uh, you can't do that, and then yeah. you're like well, well we can do this or definitely a lot. But I think what kind of makes a good professional is that they can recognize when something would work or is worth trying, mm. and they can recognize when something's like it's too far. That's we would need to test that, yeah, right? Yeah. So like in the meeting, in the production meeting, you know, the, the new guy might be like, oh yeah, we could, oh, yeah, no, no problem, worries. yeah, no, we'll yeah, figure yeah, it out. Yeah. And then on the day, you're like, you're just embarrassing yourself because you, yeah, you, you didn't do the proper testing. Right. And you didn't ask for the time to do the testing. So yeah. if they can't give you the time, then it's maybe like, let's simplify the vision. Right. Know? So and that just comes from experience of being embarrassed enough times. Like not, <laughs> not prepping Yeah, we something. could do this. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's part of the job is is just knowing like okay, we can do that or we can't do that, but mm -hmm. we could change it up a little bit so we could get something better or just a little different, whatever. Yeah. It's all the movie magic. I don't know. I I just really enjoy hearing the stories of how much work and how much like creativity goes in even though it's all plan and you're going like there's still so much in each step there's like creativity of like how to figure how, how to do this mm -hmm. what's the best way and then like that you know the dp comes and just whips it and then like yeah that's the you know like that's yeah. the actual thing you know yeah. it's a lot of creative problem solving um a lot of tinkering you know i'd say in another life i would have been a grip yeah. Because that, that's like all they do is like, how do you rig this light here? Yeah. But you can't touch the ceiling and we see 90% of the room. Okay, yeah, yeah. you can put something there, but like cantilever it over, yeah, you yeah. know, straps and weights and physics. And, and the DP or director is just like, we want this. And I'm like, okay, all right, yeah. well. <laughs> that's why you need a good team around you. So you can be like, yeah. here's what we want to do and then trust that it's going to get done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also understanding the limitations of the gear, right? DP yeah. That just, has no concept of it. They may ask for impossible things. But yeah. then also some of the like the best directors I've worked with don't understand the gear. Mm. So they're not limited, like their imagination's not limited by yeah, like yeah, the yeah. constraints of like the physical world. Yeah, so they come up with this crazy stuff and then you, that's where the innovation happens. Right? Right. Oh, maybe we could try that. Are you then constantly keeping up with like new tools that are coming out, new technologies, mm -hmm. and then fit, then yeah, keep that in your mind like when somebody asks like, hey, we want to do this. Like, oh, I have this like new tool, this new yeah. thing. Yeah. Or do you bring it up even sometimes like, oh, we could try this thing. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I do that out of my excitement. Like, oh, let's try the Ronin 4D on this movie. And it's like, okay, shit, now I gotta like- Yeah, now you gotta make it action. I gotta learn this thing and <laughs> test it because I've suggested it. So like cart before the horse sometimes, but that's, you know, yeah. yeah. Dude, uh, thank you so much for coming and uh, breaking down some of this stuff. We gotta, yeah. we gotta do some more of these. Sure, gonna, I'd love to. Uh, whatever you end up shooting next. Can't talk about the next stuff. Can't can't talk about it. Well, right now, there's not <laughs> right much being shot at all. You know, for those, it's two, it's May 2023, and there's a writer's there's strike. There's a writer's strike happening. Put a damper on Everything me. is on hold, basically, yeah. right now. But, but it's let, let me come here. And yeah, this is so good. We got to yeah. fly some drones, got to break some yep. break down some stuff. Um, next, I'll be coming hang out with you in LA and uh, you know, coming on set yeah. a little bit. Let's shoot some. <laughs> All right, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks, Chris, for, for doing this, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.